All right, my name is Greg Halliday and I'm with Eichel Camp North America and we're a manufacturer of sonic drilling machinery. And we're also a manufacturer of um, CPT and SPT equipment. And we offer the full package of all of that. So I'm, I'm gonna be advancing my screen as I go. How do I do that? So I just move it to the right? Okay, there we got it. This is so prepared. <clears throat> so a brief history of sonic drilling. Um, 1913, it was developed. George Constantinesco drilled through granite. They figured out how to do it, 1930. Ion Baskin applied the technique for deep soil, increasing depth and diameter. And they were also to make a truly vertical hole truly vertical cased hole with minimal deflection or walk-off, which is a great benefit of sonic drilling versus mud or versus air drilling. Uh, the 40s and the 50s, the technique was applied to the oil industry with little success, and they wanted to develop it for speed, increase the drilling speed. Um, 1958, Al Bodine developed sonic pile driving and seismic shot equipment for hole drilling. Very successful. It went idle from there and there's a man named Ray Rusi from Vancouver, British Columbia who picked it up, developed the first commercially viable sonic head. Um, it was Ray Rusi and a guy named James Savinkoff. And that head is still in operation today. <clears throat> it's known as a Rusi 50K head and it's a uh, it's kind of the crown jewel on our equipment, our sonic drilling equipment. Moving along. Principles of sonic drilling. Um, high speed eccentric move inside the head. And there, there's timing marks for the oscillator positions. And the rotation of those creates the vibration inside the head, which is isolated in an air spring, which makes the vibration go down the drill string to the bit or the shoe, whatever the cutting end is. High frequency, low amplitude mechanical vibration with ro rotation and down pressure. Uh, when resonance occurs, vibrations coincide with the natural resonant frequency of the drill string. Resonant energy is delivered to and focused at the bit, from the head to the bit. Um, Modern sonic drilling, we've been to over a thousand feet and um, it's pretty successful. And the borehole is advanced as a result of shearing and displacement. Sonic vibrations cause liquefaction or fluidization of alluvial soils. With vibration, the sonic, <clears throat> the soil particles, they lose contact and react like a mud fluid even in their dry state. Uh, formation material must be broken before rock can be penetrated. Um, drilling of harder layers, a bit with tungsten carbide buttons, usually a flat face bit, is needed, plus water for cutting. Um, very good retrieval of core samples, even in concrete and rebar um, for pilot hole drilling for construction. Some of the principles it's fast and efficient in all overburden formations, <clears throat> glacial till, alluvial formations, um, right down to clays, compacted sands. You have a, <clears throat> you don't have to change tooling when changing formations. You can just keep going. Saving on drill time and soft mix and hard formations. Next says, possibility to combine drilling techniques and use the most efficient drilling technique for the job. <clears throat> most sonic heads built today, you can run an air hammer off the end of the drill string. You can run a core barrel off the end of the drill string. Um, you can advance casing with water. Most of the time, water is your only drilling fluid. You don't have to mix muds. You don't have to um, do any of that. You can advance tooling and you can advance casing also with compressed air and then some water to keep the dust down with the right bit, depending on what you're trying to achieve. <clears throat> so samples, 
of things that you can drill. It's, uh, overburden, reinforced cement, riprap, sand, gravel, cobbles, boulders, bricks, any kind of fill. <clears throat> New York City, you're drilling on a sidewalk. You're ultimately going to drill down through something that was already there. Wooden pilings, tires, rail lines, compacted garbage, slag piles, bedrock, steel, and then the last one is delicate formations, which I think is kind of an odd, after all that, we want to talk about delicate formations. Um, samples, foundation drilling. Here you see a picture <clears throat> in Brooklyn, and they're going to anchor those sheet pilings back into the ground. Bore a cased hole. There's a, there's a pre-existing hole cut in the sheet piling. Bore a cased hole, drop your installation, grout it, pull your casing out. I was just asking if that was the Gowanus Canal. I believe it is. We, we enjoyed the Gowanus Canal project because there was no end to the good places to eat over there. Right? Pizza and bagels. What's not to like? <clears throat> so applications for foundation drilling, um, injection for ground improvement, soil sealing, micropiling, and micropiling into... Um, the sheet pilings like we just saw, anchor installations, chemical injection, pile length determination, and pilot hole drilling, which is drilling through a pre-existing foundation rebar so the big foundation rig can get in there. And I found if you are building a hole through a pre-existing foundation, <clears throat> if you run water to lubricate and cool your bit with the right amount of vibration and feed, it will cut everything like butter. Yeah, I have pictures that aren't on my PowerPoint that if you're interested in seeing. So we have some examples of sonic drilling projects here. Pilot borehole drilling in Denmark, length determination in France, uh, dam improvements, which we do a lot of dam improvement drilling in the North Sea. Uh, Gowanus Canal again, sheet piling from a barge, and foundation improvements. A couple of things I just want to touch on from my own experience, <clears throat> having run sonic machinery for about 20, 25 years. Um, unparalleled and overburdened, it can put a cased hole in, in pretty much anything. And with the construction drills, chassis, we can do it at just about any angle. Um, <clears throat> sampling overburden, discrete water sampling. If you're running a push ahead water sampling ahead of where you're drilling. Um, Grouting, pressure grouting, grouting installations for foundations. It's good for water monitoring wells, dewatering, <clears throat> pilot holes in existing foundations, which we've touched on. Um, <clears throat> earthen dams. We're able to put a cased hole in, right to the bottom of a dam without using any fluids. Drilling an open hole, casing the hole, cleaning out inside of the casing right to the bottom. Um, packer testing, installation of vibrating wire piezometers for like a proposed dam footing. I did a project in Colorado in Box Creek for that. And we installed vibrating wire piezometers. There was 10 in each column and we had them down to 450 feet. <clears throat> and obviously those measured for ground shift. And also, it isn't really a construction-related thing, but the ability for a sonic drilling machine to case off aquifers. If you have multiple aquifers, we were on the Puchak Wellfield Rehabilitation in Pensacola, New Jersey, 12 years ago. We had to go down into the third aquifer, so we were able to drill, case off into the clay, keep drilling, case off into the next clay, and then drill down to the bottom of the third aquifer. Install monitoring wells, on the top of each clay zone without cross-contaminating um, the groundwater. So 
other projects that were good for Sonic that was I was on, the DC Water and Sewer Authority <clears throat> for the um, overflow tunnel that they bored and they're gonna bore into the clay. Um, Wolf Creek Dam Rehabilitation, which if you meet anybody from Treviacos who's here, they've all been there. I think it was, I was there for four years. I think the project went on for 10 years, grounding the caverns under the dam. And um, I did various soil nail installations for wind turbine anchors. And we were the first people with sonic rigs to figure out how to do that, to pressure grout the bolts in place. Um, anybody have any questions? What are the ground vibrations like with so sonic drilling and compared to conventional drilling methods? And would they typically be acceptable if you're drilling near a sensitive structure such as a bridge foundation? They're, they're, you, depending on how close you are, um, you have the ability to crack a foundation if you're right next to it. Modern foundations, not so much. A lot of drilling that we've done in New York City and Brooklyn in the boroughs, obviously we're on a sidewalk. But the first thing the property owner does is comes out and will say that we've cracked their foundation, which crack's been there since the 40s, but it doesn't spread further than a few feet radius. Like if I'm at the control panel, my drill string is right here. You can feel it on the ground, but it's not, um, it's not that impactful to the surrounding areas. But a lot of places in sensitive areas, the engineering companies that would hire us to drill, they have vibration monitoring equipment in place. Uh, what is the largest diameter you have um, drilled and the deepest? I've drilled 14 inch casing to probably 150 feet. And the deepest that I was able to Sonic drill is 1140 feet and that was out in Arizona without using any water. What, what was your rate of advancement on the 14 inch? Just curious. Uh, the 14 inch casing we were we were sonic drilling and washing into the ground. So we were able to drill <clears throat> for an average 10 foot piece of casing it would be maybe 15 minutes. And that's, that's averaging, you know, you might go through some clay zones. You may hit some hard pan. Um, you may have to pull back up, get started again, and then go. But it, it was 15 minutes a stick. So the casing is threaded? Casing? The casing threads together. Yeah. So yes. Do, does it lose energy uh, through those threads? or just? Uh, There's different casing designs. Um, there's three-piece pipe, which is a tube and ends that are milled and, and welded and swedged in. Um, there's one piece pipe, which I've run a lot of one piece pipe. Obviously the tooling joints, because they're a little bit thicker, you're gonna lose energy, but you don't, you know, if you weren't losing any energy, I'd hate to see how much power the Sonic heads really have. Does that make sense? Yeah. <clears throat> but to be able to advance casing and drill to the depths that we've drilled, um, we were down, it was Gainesville, Florida at Cabot Coppers, which is a telephone pole treating facility. We were to, it was just over a thousand feet. And the reason we stopped is we couldn't pull the, couldn't pull the drill string out of the hole. We exceeded the rig's ability to, to pull the tooling out of the hole. So f to be able to drill to a thousand feet, um, with loss of resonant energy, I think, I think the sonic rigs do pretty good. Yeah. Does TerraSonic have a question? No. <laughs> so, I mean, is there different circumstances that warrant, sometimes you, you seem to indicate you drill without water, sometimes you drill with mud, sometimes you just, you just shoot it down with sonic only, is that correct? Yeah, if you have, <clears throat> and you know, as Tarek Sonic will tell you, you may be in a formation, uh, Panhandle of Florida is a good example, around Pensacola, Milton, Florida. You have to wash your casing down. You can't drill dry, so you have to have an additive in there. It's clay? It's too much clay, is that the reason? Or, uh... Well, no, it's just sand. What it oh. is, is, is it's non, 
It's beach sand, right. which is different from like sand along the Ohio River Valley. It's not washed. It's uh, very granular. And like if you compact flour in a bin, it's doing the same thing to your casing. Um, so sometimes you might run some light drilling mud, lubricate everything, get your cuttings back up to the surface. Once you get into the water table, obviously you're going to stop using mud because you don't need it. Yeah. Sometimes we use air and water mixture. What, what, why, is it, why is it limited to small diameters, the, this technology? The casing. I think the applications. Well, why couldn't you? Like, we, we deal with a lot of large diameter pile. Yep. And so, like, take a 36 inch by one inch wall pile. You just, just the machinery is too massive to get that vibrating. Is that, that the limiting factor? Uh, it's actually something that EcoCamp's working on yeah. is, is a more powerful head for much larger um, tooling. But the 12, 12 inch historically, um, I know Matrix, I know your guys tooling. Historically, the 12 inch casing is, a, are you guys doing 14, 13, just 12? That's historically um, the largest people run and it's, the, the sonic drilling market is, is, is dictated by the need for the service. Well, does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, yeah. as opposed to like vibrating a twelve-inch pile down with a with a you know a vibratory hammer, right? Your your the level of damage it seems with your technology would be a lot less to the structure. Is that correct? Because it's correct. It's lower amplitude. Is that what it is? Yep. Just higher frequency. Yep. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah, because that's a big problem. I mean, how how does it stack up versus a variable moment pile driving hammer? You you're familiar with those, right? Yeah. Variable moment hammers. You know, they kind of you kind of dial them in later, but it's still got a fair bit of amplitude, like you know, up quarter inch. You know, whereas yours is very, is it very small amplitude? Very, is that fair to say? Or it's a more uh, <clears throat> the the vibrations for sonic drilling is more of a fine tuned um, vibration and amplitude, and also the systems that. Um, like our heads, their heads with the air spring. Um, it's designed to put the vibration down into the ground in a different way. Just higher frequency, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Do you have any questions? No. I wish you did. <laughs> no, I'm okay. I came in late. So. I gotcha. I did too. I have, I have, I didn't know I was going to be presenting today, and I had I was on the phone with three people, and they came over looking for me. So what what's the longest single, un, uh, continuous section of casing you've been able to drive? I guess that's dictated by the rig, right? The longest. Yeah, like it seems you're using threaded sections, right? Most Correct. of the time, they're Correct. ten feet long. I don't. Sometimes you get a very long, non-threaded piece of casing that you have to drive by any. Is there a no, not unless we're installing a well. That's um, yeah. <clears throat> that's the only. I mean, we right. if that has to be welded together and dropped down into a case. But for all intents and purposes, it's it's you know, there's two foot casing, there's five foot casing, and then ten foot casing. Right. Um, since I started doing this quite a long time ago, um, these guys will tell you the same thing. Um, it's it's the, usually the size of the job and the depth requirement, and then also traveling with it. Right. Because usually we'll travel with the machine, the pipe truck, water truck. Um, being modular and smaller, it, it works better. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. That's it. <laughs>